Hey everybody, we are here in Florence, Italy. It's time to break out the wine and the olive oil because on this bank for your buck, you're gonna need your passport. Andiamo. We're checking out three Tuscan entertainment renovations, each done for 80 grand. What is this? There's nothing else like it. With a hand from Italian realty expert Andrea Venturini. In Italy, life revolves around food. Designer Vern Yip is checking out true Tuscan design. It doesn't feel Tuscan to me. Which homeowners nailed their renovations? This is alfresco dining. Ooh. A buyer might think that this is not necessary. And what tips can you get from their Italian adventure? This is what authentic Tuscan design is about. Now, this, this is the Tuscany most people think of. Beautiful rolling hills with olive groves and vineyards like this one near Cortona where under the Tuscan sun was shot. It's a serene, almost welcoming feeling walking through the countryside and design-wise, that's what people try to capture on the inside of their homes. Jan and Renato wanted to create a family Tuscan retreat when they spend 80 grand renovating the entertainment spaces of an old countryside villa. We live here in uh, the countryside. Cortona, the, the ancient city, is about 10 minutes away. It really is a great location. Days just uh, melt one into the mm -hmm. other. The, the villa originally was... It was a main church. It was the Pieve, which is the religious center of the area. It needed... Uh, New plumbing, new windows, new, new electrical, electrical wiring. The very run down. Needed a lot of love. It's warm, it's welcoming, it's very relaxing. That's what this place is all about. It's about sort of regaining your soul. I wanted to have something where I could enjoy cooking, and therefore we chose uh, the best looking and biggest stove. We wanted to have a granite top for the simple reason that you can cut on it very well. These are made by a local artisan. It's um, a poplar wood. We wanted a big refrigerator yeah. because that's, uh, you know, that's traditionally what you want. It's always a mess inside. This is my baby in a way. It's an antique slicing machine. Renato uh, saw this in Cortona. He stopped in the street dead in his tracks, and I thought for sure there must have been a movie star like Sophia Loren walking by. Here we are in the, the dining room. Everybody enjoys the wine, the fellowship. When you come over to the fireplace, we kept it because it's a very nice conversation piece. Plus it, it acts a bit like a frame in the dining room for the table. We try to create an outdoor dining space which is Typical Italian. Most Italians would never be indoors if you can be outdoors. You can be with your kids or with your elders. Italians will talk about food, wine, and women. Not necessarily in that order because that changes depending on the time of the day. Now, Vern, this is going to be an impressive property. We're talking about a typical villa. The ones that you would be seeing scatters around the hills of Tuscany and perfectly blended between the olive trees and the vineyards. I mean, I love how authentic the design really feels. I mean, it's really kind of reflective of the rural character of the region. Well, this kitchen is magnifico. <laughs> Look at the ceiling, I think, oh my gosh, the architecture, it's so beautiful. Is that it? <laughs> This is the heart of the house, and this is where the owners really invested most of their money. These are, I think, solid poplar cabinets, and they are really beautiful. I love how beat up and worn they are. Only thing I could say from a buyer perspective is nowadays the trend, it's more towards a lighter color. Ah, it's too trendy. Lighter cabinets for me would make it like very modern instead of being Tuscan as it should be. I look at this, this, uh, this granite. Yes. I expect something more rustic in a Tuscan kitchen. From a point of view of a chef, it makes uh, the best sense. And it's a great color. I mean, this looks like a professional stove. In Italy, life revolves around food. It's all so about eating. It's all about <laughs> eating. This is a really big refrigerator. This is an American style refrigerator. It is, we brought it from the States. It's a half Italian, half American kitchen. This is a very good choice for the buyer. Andrea, look at this. What is this? It's a slicing machine. To me, it looks like an Italian sports car. That's an impressive piece of machinery. The original Berkel meat slicer. Do You would use this every day. People would have their own salami and ham. There is nothing else like it. Complete feat of engineering. 
learn. Here is your sala da pranzo, the real dining room. Truly, when I walk in here, I think eating here is a sporting event. Well, I don't know about sporting event, it's an enjoyful event. Yeah, I don't think we wrestle too much at the dining, dining yeah. table. This is more of what authentic Tuscan design is about, the white walls and the terracotta floors. They were able to keep this fireplace, which is totally original. This is a huge statement piece. I mean, I look at this detail on this crest. And it is, it is a, a very much added value to the property. It's a Pietra Serena, which was carved by someone locally 500 mm. years ago. It belongs there. All the lighting in here is so beautiful. You can tell that this is an older piece, but the simplicity and the elegance of this, to me, speaks of Tuscany. This is called Ferro Battuto, and there are local artisans that still make the same pieces after hundreds of years. Wow, I, I like whatever you said better. Very traditional. This is Alfresco Dining. I feel like I'm in the middle of a movie or on a photo shoot. That's where you spend most of the time, actually. Seven, actually. eight months at least. That's right. But there is one thing that some buyers might object. The kitchen, as you notice, it's far away. Someone who is interested in this house would probably either have a chef, definitely they would have someone to serve the food anyway. We may not have a potential buyer, we may just keep it <laughs> <But> forever. <yeah. laughs> this house has most of the things that people would expect. Check me in, I'm just gonna stay. Coming up. I'm not sure whether I should take a bath in here or wash dishes. And later. I feel like a palazzo ruler. This is amazing. Come on, you cannot talk about Italy without talking about the food. Italian cuisine is fantastica, from the pasta, to the bread, to the wine, to the cheese. And you can't eat in Tuscany without dining al fresco or outside. In fact, the sidewalk cafes and restaurants here are legendary. Everybody, from the smallest apartment to the biggest mansion, tries to incorporate al fresco dining into their homes. Arthur and Martha Zinn spend 80 grand on the Tuscan entertainment areas of their old country farmhouse. We have our house in the middle of Tuscany, eight miles southwest of Arezzo. We fell in love with the Tuscan countryside. Before we got here, oh my gosh, what did we get ourselves in for? Caving in ceilings and boards coming down. Literally where the pigs were, were kept is a pigsty. That now is our kitchen. We've created our getaway for ourselves and our family as well as guests. We love it. We've created around the house several areas for al fresco dining. Outdoor living is really important in Italy. What we found is eating outdoors is, is really an integral part of, of who we are here and how we enjoy our time. But when we can't eat outside, we eat in the horse stall which is now our dining room. We did try to recreate a lot of these paint colors. And even though it's a farmhouse, it's very unusual for us to have a courtyard. And obviously be able to enjoy it. Have a glass of Prosecco. Okay, this was the pigsty. By Italian standards though, it's much larger than would be necessary. This would be a frivolous kind of kitchen. We have two separate kitchens so that we could have an intimate setting where we could just cook for the family but still have the capabilities to cook for a lot of people. It's a little strange to have a piece of rock sticking into your kitchen, but this is the bedrock of the house. But I was too afraid to remove it, hoping the walls would not fall down. We discovered this arch from rubble up to here. We kept going and going and we just couldn't believe our luck and we went right down to floor level, so we decided to keep it. This was our big splurge. We put in a stove with a pasta cooker so you can add your boiling water and just change the baskets. The Tuscan lifestyle seeps in slowly. It's all encompassing and it's relaxing. Vern, here on the hills of Tuscany, 
99% of the times, the city will not allow you to do any change to any existing building or have any addition. Wow, so from a design standpoint, that's a huge challenge because you've got to work with existing walls, existing openings, and just make your space adapt accordingly. Andrea, come on, if I looked up an American definition of a Tuscan kitchen, this is the picture that I would see. I mean, it's got the golds and the reds. It's nice that he appreciates it, yeah. Yes. I always thought Tuscan kitchens, authentic ones, had white walls. What about the yellow walls? This is a very young, new trend. I like that guy, he says we're younger. <laughs> I love the travertine countertops, and I love the way that the countertops seamlessly blend into this huge sink. I'm not sure whether I should take a bath in here or wash dishes. <laughs> take a bath. <laughs> It's not practical, right? We don't need such a, such a large sink, but I like that it echoes the traditional sinks that used to be there. Buyers would really appreciate the size, they would appreciate the color too. How many kitchens have you been in with an ancient boulder lodged in the corner? And this is history and I think it's so cool. And some owners would find it so charming and somebody would just not like it and say, what is it doing in my kitchen? You guys remove it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave up. <laughs> Look at this arch. Well, this is when making yourself adapt to an existing structure really pays off. Ooh. Wow. You know, I'm wondering though, why the need for two kitchens? This could be a problem. A buyer might think that this is not necessary. Fool. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. Mm. It's been practical. We've used it a lot. The tiles here. These are hand painted. Yeah, I know there's a Tuscan tradition with ceramics. So this is a nice way to pay homage to it without going overboard. Money well spent on those tiles. This looks like where the king and queen should be having dinner. I look at the furniture and it, it seems a little bit on the formal side, maybe not as Tuscan. He's right. And we did debate that, but um, we had so many other informal spaces. And also, everyone eats outside when they can anyway. Right. Oh, this is my number one favorite space we've seen in this whole house. I love the intimate nature of it. I love the stones. Wow. My gosh, wow. That was unexpected. Here we are. This is the outside dining space. This beautiful vine canopy. This instantly makes me think I am in Italian wine country. A future buyer will tell you right away, this area really lacks of a preparation area for the food. And I can also imagine it could be a nice barbecue be placed right here. A barbecue? <laughs> barbecue? Well, I, it's true we that Italians barbecue, now are, no. are doing barbecues and it would yeah. be nice to have that. I think this is a really beautiful property. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Coming up. This to me looks a little bit like Sweden and Italy came together and had a kitchen. We had to approach this place completely differently. And later. I did not expect that Tuscan design can really be very fancy and very refined. We're here in Florence, Italy, the capital of Tuscany and the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance. Now, Florence is the art capital of Italy and over 10 million visitors a year flock here for its culture. Look around, this place is an art gallery. There's a real passion here for history, for art, and for music. And you'll see that in some of the Tuscan homes. John and Brigitte Ermsum wanted to combine the culture of a city center and old world Tuscan charm when they renovated the entertainment spaces of their apartment or palazzo. We live in Barga. Barga is one of the most beautiful mountain towns of Italy. It's a very, very magic place. You can feel almost that generations of people have lived here. Our house is at the so-called Piazza Angelia. We are right at the heart of this old town. Before, you could tell that nobody had lived there for 40 or 50 years. Walls had holes, cracks. It was empty. Now we have a home which reflects our taste, our interests. It's just something we deeply enjoy. 
Now this is our entrance hall. This is the first room you come into. I mean, the real beauty of this room, in a way, is this uh, mantelpiece. And so it's about 500 years old, but the, one of the real beauties. It has this wonderful parquet floor made out of rare wood from Africa. We had it hand scraped and restored. It was it's beautiful. It's simply beautiful. Then it has this wonderfully warm color, of almost a sienna color. We love it because it has a, a unique warmth to it. This is our ringside seat on the famous Italian theater of life. Here I can step up, I can see what's going on in the town. People come here in the summer for one purpose only, and that's to have a good time, to celebrate. And this is our little kitchen. In fact, it's a kitchenette or a kitchenella. This is granite from Sardinia. We feel it unifies the space. This is our precious balcony and it's tiny, teensy weensy, but we're so lucky to have one at all. We sit here and have a breakfast here. The view just always just lifts my spirit. It's a wonderful way to start the day. Tuscany is just not only rolling hills. Here we are in Barga, in the heart of the Garfagnana. I mean, clearly, this is much more of an urban environment. I mean, you still have the beautiful Tuscan architecture, but it being more urban, it kind of frees you up to have a little more contemporary or eclectic interior. Andrea, all I have to say is, wow, this is a grand space. Yeah, you just feel like a king when you're here. Very well put. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. bravo. <laughs> But think about it, we're talking about in the middle of the 15th century and the Medici were ruling and this was one of their homes away from Florence. I mean, it just feels so important. And I think one of the primary reasons why is this fireplace. I mean, you have to be blind not to notice that. <laughs> and you can see the engraving and the symbols of the Medici family and every buyer would just walk in here and say, wow. The rooms themselves make their own design statement. It doesn't really matter what you do or don't put in them. I immediately look down and I see these incredible floors. They're not the terracotta floors that we're used to seeing in a lot of these Tuscan rooms. Indeed, this is a very intricate pattern and it shows that this is a little bit of a one step higher than the normal household. Yes, that's definitely true. It's not a farmhouse. We had to approach this place completely differently. This obviously is a color that the homeowners put in, and I think they've definitely shown that they are putting their personal flavor into this space. Typical buyers would expect more of a traditional situation, and this is a little bit out of the ordinary. We had to find a line between an obligation to this beautiful heritage of Italy and having fun ourselves. Here is the kitchen. I would say a little bit small for the kind of property that we're talking about, and the buyers might find it not adequate. We couldn't make it any bigger because the walls were already there. Okay, we can talk about the kitchen in just a second, but come on, look at that view. What could be nicer than cooking and standing in there and seeing the mountains, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Sweetheart, yeah. <laughs> that's very true, especially in as much as I do most of the cooking. <laughs> okay, so now that I'm past the view, which I'm really not past, I'm looking at the kitchen. It doesn't immediately say to me, Tuscany. This to me looks a little bit like Sweden and Italy came together and had a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that's very well put, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Now, Let's talk about the cabinets. They're really light wood. I love the frosted glass, but again, it feels very contemporary. It doesn't feel Tuscan to me. Oh, it's meant to be contemporary. We did not try to have an antique store in our kitchen. Andrea, please. I would never leave this space. You know, walking into the kitchen, it's much smaller than what you would expect from a grand palazzo. But there is this phenomenal view that you see from this alfresco dining space. Yes, that's one of the great beauties of that small space. Vern, buyers will go crazy. An outside space in a palazzo, this is very unusual. I feel like a palazzo ruler. This is amazing. Coming up, the average return on investment in Tuscany is about 115%. The question is, how much better can you do? Find out the incredible results next.
Andrea, really, thank you so much for being such a special guide through Tuscany. I learned so much, and thank you for showing me three really phenomenal properties, all with entertaining spaces that were renovated for $80,000. Tuscany is very hard to renovate, so whatever money you put in, you're going to get your 100% back. The question is, how much better can you do? The average return on investment in Tuscany it's about 115%. Okay, well, so let's talk about who got the biggest bang for your buck. Jan and Renato, they live in that amazing thousand-year-old villa near Cortona. You know, they had the kitchen that most closely resembled my version of a Tuscan kitchen, an incredible dining room, and that outdoor alfresco dining space. I did not expect to see that much seating outside, and I also didn't expect to see a standard American-sized refrigerator. I learned that that's kind of important now. They did an amazing job. They put all their enthusiasm in a renovation, and therefore they're gonna get 115% back. And that is $92,000. Let's talk about Arthur and Martha. They live in that exquisite farmhouse right outside of Arezzo. You know, I was blown away by the super professional kitchen, and of course, that magical courtyard. I really was surprised to see a little more color in Tuscan kitchens, and I was also really surprised that you can't change the structure of an old farmhouse. You have to work with what you've got, and they did a really nice job. They're actually gonna get 120% on the return on investment. That is $96,000. Let's talk about John and Brigitte. That's that amazing urban palazzo with the huge, grand, important dining room, and the, the kitchen with views of the Tuscan mountains that go on for miles. I was really surprised that even in an urban setting, you still managed to get alfresco dining in, and the Tuscan design can really be very fancy and very refined. They did a great job. For their renovation, they're gonna get their money back, and they will get 110% in return of investment, and that means $88,000. So that means that Arthur and Martha got the biggest bang for your buck. They had an incredible kitchen that was really professionally done with all the special Tuscan touches, the materials, the colors, a really elegant dining room. And on top of that, they had an alfresco dining space that seats tons of people. We fell in love with the Tuscan countryside about 10 years ago, and we've been coming back ever since. There's lots of room sort of for the heart and for the mind in this place. It's a spectacular place that you can't wait to come back to and you hate to leave. <laughs>